Hola, mis estudiantes, y bienvenidos a la sexta semana. Ahora estamos hablando esta semana de los pasatiempos, el tiempo libre, y esta semana también vamos a hablar de el verbo gustar. ¿Ok? Eh, y empezamos. Ok, esta semana vamos a estar hablando de los pasatiempos, los deportes y el tiempo libre. So again, these words may be a little bit more or different from the ones in your book, but it's always just good to have more exposure. Obviously, the ones in your book are you already have. So sometimes it, feel, it feels a little bit like there's no point in going over those words because you already have them there on the page. Um, but some of these will probably be concurrent. Okay. En el tiempo libre, hay mucho para hacer. El tiempo libre is just a way of saying free time, right? The word libre means free, right? And tiempo is a word for time. So tiempo libre is just free time. Por ejemplo, puedes leer o escuchar música. So you can read. Leer is the word for read, right? Or escuchar música, which is um, to listen to music. Puedes ver televisión o una película. Even though the word mirar is the word for watch in Spanish, you don't uh, mirar televisión. You ver televisión. You see television as opposed to watching television in Spanish. Tal vez te gusta tiempo para estar con amigos, ¿no? It, amigos is a word for friends, ¿no? Con tus amigos, with your friends, right? Te gusta tal vez, ¿no? Ir a tomar un café. You know, you can go and have a coffee, ¿no? Ir a una discoteca. Go to a discotheque. Uh, ir con tus amigos, ¿no? A un concierto. You can go to a concert. Ir al cine, ¿no? Go to the movies. Ir al bar. Obvious, ¿no? Ir de compras. Go shopping. O te gusta estar afuera en el aire libre. ¿no? So the word Libre means free. Aire is obviously the word for air. So in the outdoors, no, I, al aire libre would be, you know, things, activities that you do outside, no? Se puede hacer un picnic o se hace un picnic, no? To have a picnic. Okay, in the outdoors, al aire libre, no? You can andar en bicicleta, no? To ride a bike. The verb Andar does not mean the word ride. Uh, there is no word that is comparable in Spanish for the word ride. We use different words to mean ride. We can use andar, we can use montar. Um, there are lots of different types of words that we use um, for the word ride, but there's no physical translation. In some dialects of Spanish, they might say raite, but there's no literal translation of that word. And that is just a word that means to go around in or, you know, meander. So andar en bicicleta, if you're andar en bicicleta is a kind of feels like a relaxed thing, okay? So patinar, patinar is just the word for skate, but in línea would mean like inline skates. Montar a caballo, so here we have a different word for ride, right? Montar a caballo is the word for riding a horse, no? Uh, montar is a word that we use for riding anything that we're going to get on. So like we might montar el avión, no, for example. No, so if we're getting on something, um, then we're going to montar. So pescar, no, to fish. Okay, so puede hacer ejercicio, no. Uh, hacer is a word for do or make. So again, right, you do exercise. Se puede correr, no, you can run, o caminar por las montañas. Um, the, uh, the word for hiking, though, is different than uh, just walking in the mountains. Um, se hace el senderismo, no, you do senderismo. Uh, senderismo is a word for hiking. No? Uh, okay, algunos deportes, no, como jugar al baloncesto, no, so to play basketball, o jugar al béisbol. Jugar al fútbol o jugar al fútbol americano. Jugar al tenis o jugar al voleibol. 
En el agua, so in the water, right, you might esquiar. Esquiar is a word for skiing, but you can also esquiar en el agua. And I'm sure that some of you guys have done that here in Florida. O también se puede nadar, no se nada. También se puede tocar un instrumento. The word jugar is the word for play, but it only means physical activities. So you play sports, you play outside, but if you're going to play an instrument, then you tocar un instrumento. So you tocar la guitarra, tocar el piano, no tocar el violín, no, but you don't jugar any of those things, no? Okay. Vamos a practicar poquito. Now let's just go through this little activity to just see how we do. Okay. ¿A dónde se juega baloncesto? So in what countries normally do we play basketball? ¿A dónde se juega baloncesto? Los Estados Unidos, España, Argentina, Francia, Brasil, Turquía, o todos son correctos. All are correct. The answer is... Todos son correctos. So in all of these places, basketball is popular. ¿A dónde se juega el tenis? Los Estados Unidos, Inglaterra, Australia y Francia, Grecia y Turquía, Alemania y Rusia, o números uno y dos son correctos. You probably have guessed it, right? Es... Número uno y dos son correctos. No, so normally tenis is popular in the United States, England, Australia, and France. ¿A dónde se juega el fútbol? Los Estados Unidos, Latinoamérica, Europa, o en todo el mundo menos los Estados Unidos, in the whole world besides the United States. Uh, so you probably guessed this one. Also, que es En todo el mundo, menos los Estados Unidos. Hey, every country I have lived in, and I have lived in more than one, um, outside of the United States, soccer is very, 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 very popular, and people are incredibly invested in it. And in the United States, we're just not that into it. Okay. ¿A dónde se juega el fútbol americano? Los Estados Unidos, Latinoamérica, Europa o en todo el mundo menos los Estados Unidos. You probably guess this one es los Estados Unidos, ¿no? Uh, el fútbol americano is only played here in the United States. Okay, ¿a dónde se juega el béisbol? Los Estados Unidos, el Caribe, México, Canadá, Latinoamérica o todos son correctos. This one is probably also easy to guess, que es Todos son correctos. So all of these places are places where baseball is very popular. Uh, United States, the Caribbean, Mexico, Canada, and Latin America also. Okay, here are some other pasatiempos that we're going to practice just a little bit. Okay, where do you run? En el parque, en la casa, o en los dos? Of course, the answer is C, right? En los dos. You can run in both places. ¿A dónde se nada? En la piscina, en el océano, o en los dos? Of course, the answer is C, right? You can swim in both places. ¿Dónde se esquía? En las montañas, o en el lago? Here, the answer is a little bit tricky, right? Because if you were going to ski on water, you would say, ¿Dónde se esquía en el agua? So the answer is A, right? En las montañas. Okay, so here, right? ¿Dónde se esquía en el agua? No, en las montañas o en el lago. Obviously, en el lago, so B. ¿Dónde andas en bici? Bici is just a shortened way of saying bicicleta. En el parque o en la casa, obvio, no, obviously, en el parque, so A. ¿Dónde montas a caballo? En el campo o en el gimnasio. Again, no, it's pretty obvious, A, right, en el campo. Campo is just a word for 
like field or open, you know, kind of open area like that. Donde pescas, no, en el lago o en la piscina, right, en el lago. No, so A is obviously the answer. Okay. Also in this week, we talk about el verbo gustar. Gustar is just a verb that is used to talk about likes. However, it is a highly irregular verb that functions in a very particular way. And generally we tend to think that gustar, whenever we're talking about things or um, things that we like or things we like to do, only has two forms, right? It either has gusta or gustan, and that's it, right? So unlike with other verbs, you wouldn't say a mi me gusto. If you said a mi me gusto, you're saying, I like my own self as a person, no? If you say, um, nos gustamos, then you're saying, we like each other as people. It's a kind of like a reciprocal thing. So when you're talking about liking things or doing things, you can only really use two forms and that is gusta and gustan, okay? You would use gusta to talk about singular things that you like to do. So for example, here, right, we have, um, we might say, a ti te gusta el cine, no? O eh, a nosotros nos gusta la comida española, no? So those are singular items. If we're talking about verbs, so things we like to do, right? Again, we need a verb if we're talking about actions. So then we would still use gusta, the singular form, right? So for example, a mí me gusta ver películas, no? A vosotros os gusta ir al cine. A ellos les gusta tomar café, no? Um, these are all, you know, going to be used with gusta. So again, right, gusta is going to be used for singulars or infinitives, okay? Gustan is only going to be used when we're talking about things that we like that are plural, right? Example, a mí me gustan los deportes. A ti te gustan las frutas. A nosotros nos gustan las tapas, ¿no? And we're going to use it in the same form if we're talking about things that we don't like. So for example, if I wanted to say, a mí no me gustan los deportes, it's the same, right? I just put a no in front of the verb. So whenever we want to do negation, in English, it comes at the end, right? I do not like, but in Spanish, you would say, I no like, no, I no like. So in, in and we would do that with all it, right? Instead of saying, I cannot, we would say, I no can, no? Negation is always putting a no in front of the verb, okay? So that's what we would do with likes also. Okay. Um, here, right, you would use gusta, right? Here we have gusta, gusta, or gustan, right? So we would use gusta again with infinitives and singulars, right? Here are singulars, here are infinitives, and we know they're infinitives because they end in an AR or an ER or an IR. And we would also use it, right, when we're talking about, and then we would use gustan when we're talking about plural things, right? That's what this slide shows us. And here are some examples, right? Me gusta el café americano. And we use gusta because it, el café americano is singular. Now, what, is we, what does the me tell us? The me tells us I am the one doing the liking, no? Me gusta. So I am the one that likes it. If we say the second one, right? No te gusta el café americano, no? So it's a negation. And again, we're using gusta because café americano is still singular, but we've used te now. So who isn't doing the liking now? You aren't doing the liking. And we know that because we use the pronoun te, no? A mí me gusta la leche, no? We use gusta because leche is singular. But who is doing the liking? Me, because I have a me, no? 
A ellos les gusta cantar, ¿no? We use gusta because cantar is an infinitive, ¿no? And who is doing the liking? They are, and we know that because we have the pronoun les, ¿no? A nosotros no nos gusta madrugar, ¿no? So again, we have an infinitive, so we're going to use gusta. And who are who is doing the liking? Who doesn't like to get up early? It's us, right? It's we, and we know that because we use the pronoun nos. So to indicate who is doing the liking, that's what the pronoun does. So if we say me gusta, we're saying I like. Te gusta, you like. Le gusta, he, she likes. Nos gusta, we like. Os gusta, y'all like. Or les gusta, they like. Okay. There are other verbs that work like gustar, that are not just gustar, that function in the same kind of format, right? So they have gusta or gustan, no? So they would have, so for example, this first verb here in this little beige box, apetecer, no? So it would have two forms, apetece y apetecen. And so it would say, me apete apetece, no? Meaning, I would like to eat something or I, you know, something tickles my fancy. Um, or apetecen, if, it, if the thing that I'm talking about is plural, right? So it would be two forms and one would either be for infinitives or singulars and the other one would be for plurals. And the same would go for verbs like asustar, no? Asustar is to, to be surprised, no? So um, asusta o asustan, no? Um, Caer, no, cae o caen, no, doler, duele o duelen, no, encantar, encanta o encantan, fascinar, fascina, fascinan, no, importar, importa, importan, impresionar, impresiona, impresionan, molestar is to be bothered by something, okay, it doesn't mean what it looks like, um, it means something bothers you, so, molesta o molestan, no, Parecer is to appear or to have, how something appears, no? So parece o parecen, no? Preocupa o preocupan, no? Worried o queda o quedan, no? So they would function in that same kind of vein, like gustar. Okay. Again, right? The pronoun is going to tell us who is doing the liking. So the metele nos os les is going to tell us who is either doing the liking or the bothering or the fascinating or the enchanting or whatever form or whatever verb we want to use here. And then we're going to either use gusta, third person singular, or gustan, third person plural, depending on whether the item is singular, infinitive, or plural. Okay. Let's just do this quick little practice. So me, meaning I like, no, so, but we're going to look at what comes after. So, jugar is an infinitive. So, we know we have to use gustan. Oh, gusta. I'm sorry. Los libros is a plural so that we know we have to use gustan. No. Tenis is a singular. So, we know we have to use gusta. Sumo is a singular. So, we know we have to use gusta. Conciertos is plural, so we know we have to use gustan. And beber is an infinitive, so we know we have to use gusta. And música is a singular, so we know we have to use gusta. I hope that uh, makes a little bit of sense. Okay, well, I hope that helps you a little bit as you go through week six. And uh, I uh, hope that that is very informative and I will see you all in week seven. So adios y hasta la próxima.